Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be changing the fuel pump and fuel pressure sensor in this 2005 two-wheel drive Chevy Blazer. Now, it is considered a really annoying job. I'll admit it annoys me because you have to drop the tank. There's a lot involved in that and it's easier if you have a lift. But for you that don't, and I don't, so I'm going to show you how I do it without a lift. Now this requires a low profile jack. I find it easier to use it because it make, gives me more space to work around. And sometimes I'll use another jack to jack the car up and give me even more space to work with. But I'm going to be going through step by step with you guys and showing you how I get it done. Alright, now the first thing I'm doing is I'm jacking up the rear end just a little bit to give me a little more space to work under there. And remember, whenever you jack up a vehicle, always make sure you scotch your tires and try to use a jack stand. Okay, so from here what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our jack with a piece of wood to protect the gas tank, put it under here. Then what we're going to do is loosen this nut off. And then on the second strap right here, there's a bolt up there that we're going to have to loosen off. Now with the jack under here and under place, when we take these off, we'll have the jack all the way up here. Then we can just gradually let it down and we'll get to our tank. Now both of these are 15 millimeters. Now if you've never taken the gas tank or dropped it off before, well these are probably going to be a little bit of a pain to take off. But this gas tank has been out of here before. It's been several years since I've done the, the pump on this one. It's probably been about seven years. So luckily these are actually not going to be difficult to loosen up. Now, if you've never done it before and the tank's never been out, well, you're probably going to need some WD-40 or rust penetrate to free these up and a little bit of force. Now, the other one is not really that bad to get to. Because what we got is just two long extensions and we can just clearly reach up there and get it. Okay, now we're going to loosen off our filler neck hose and take that off so that we can drop the tank a little bit further. Now if you want to take the spare tire every way, you'll make a lot more room. And what we have is two electrical connectors, one here, one here, three hoses here. So you got one fuel out line out of the way so I can show you guys. Now this is a quick disconnect tool. You can see this little piece right here on there and then the fuel pump what you have to do and it is tricky is get on there and basically squeeze these tabs with the tool and then pull the line out at the same time now some people will use other tools such as needle nose and screwdrivers so that will work too this is a little quicker now you see I've already loosened the ring usually what you do is you take a screwdriver one of the little notches on this upper ring right here and you hit it, loosen it off and then this will get gain you access to the fuel pump now sometimes you can pull it out now or sometimes you have to lower the tank a little bit more depends on where you got it, where your clearance is at and how well you can finesse under the car alright now here's a ring that holds the fuel pump in the tank and these are the little notches I was talking about you take your screwdriver and tap it to loosen and tighten it up and you'll see the three prong or the four prongs sticking out where this will go and sit in and then that's what locks it in place now on our fuel pump here our little holders they're what's going to go onto the new pump because the new pump did not come with these and we're gonna have to reuse them Alright, now we have our new pump and our old pump. 
now our fuel pressure slash tank pressure sensor is actually here it usually comes with a new pump now if you're just changing this sensor you can drop the tank and actually get to it without pulling the pump but now what we're doing is we're putting this new verb piece on here we're going to reuse this ring and we're going to reuse these fittings on each end piece to connect our hoses back now of course you're going to want to make sure there's no dirt or debris when you put the fuel pump in and basically we're just going to do the same thing finesse it back in and you see it's got these springs it's got this little notch here it's going to go right there in the notch in the tank you're going to get everything lined up and good and push it down and get it in now this is going to be kind of difficult where it's at but as like the rest of this vehicle it's just patience all right now the next step once you get it down you're going to take a hammer and catch it on these little tabs here go clockwise and tap it with a hammer until you get it tight now you know it'll be tight when this slot right here is close to about halfway through this peg these pegs are actually angled and slotted so this will actually go down and through there now this angle here is what I was talking about you can see the slight gap and that's what we're knocking that into and you know when it'll stop there won't be a gap behind here it's kind of hard to see but hopefully that'll give you an idea then basically you're going to reconnect the fuel lines just by popping them on which this is becoming the easy part now now we got the fuel lines the sensor and the pump all plugged back in now we just go in reverse and basically put the tank back up and bolt it back in now that we raised up a little bit now is the perfect time to go ahead and put our filler neck hose back on and get it tightened down before we get too far and it becomes a little more difficult now make sure to go back and tighten the fasteners down and it's done Now I hope this video helped all y'all out and showed you that you could do it yourself, help you out of it, and help you save money by not taking it to the shop, that you could do it yourself. And as always, thanks for watching.